Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. If you've been watching my channel you know that I like to dabble in a bit of home automation and in this video I'm excited to share with you the Aquara W600. It's the new radiator thermostat from Aquara, a brand who have a good reputation in this space. Now for me personally I've never used a radiator thermostat so I thought this would be a good opportunity to give my honest review of this product so things like the setup, the installation and the performance and then be able to make more of an informed decision as to whether or not this is the right choice for me. Now alongside this device they did send me the W100 climate sensor and also the M100 hub which is how you would connect and pair all of these devices together. Now I'll show that process of setting that up because if you're just getting started into this or maybe that's just the decision you want to make that could be the ecosystem that you want. Personally as you know on my channel I've got home assistant already set up I've already got a Zigbee router etc so I'm going to be connecting those devices in the end to that system so hopefully Hopefully by the end of this you've got both of those ecosystem options that you can use. At the end I'll give you my conclusion and my thoughts and whether or not this is going to be something that I go down, i.e. am I going to want to buy more of these devices or is it something I'm simply happy to just do the old fashioned way with those manual twisty valves. Anyway let's have a quick look now at these devices and then we'll get on to the installation and configuration. First up we have the W100 climate sensor. This is a dual protocol device like all of the devices we're reviewing today that supports both Matter and Zigbee. There's three buttons on the device which are customizable with nine actions. There's a large and vivid LCD display which will provide you with real-time metrics from your device. There's external sensor linking which I'll show later on and it gives you the ability for HVAC remote control and promotes long battery life. On the rear of the device is a reset button which you'll need for repairing the device and I'll demonstrate using that later when I remove this from the Aquara ecosystem and put it onto my Zigbee network. The W600 thermostat comes in a different form factor to the previous E1. On this one again it has a plastic housing which you can see on screen. It does come with extended battery life up to two years is what is being reported. Unfortunately, I have no way of testing that at the moment. The device itself feels hefty. It supports both Thread and Zigbee. It seems well built with a clear display on the front, which I'll show later on. And there are a number of valves and adapters that are included as part of the packaging. The device does support smart scheduling and automations, as you would expect. There's power monitoring for insights and automations overheat and overload protection and RGB LED status likes as well as a child lock button as well to prevent those little hands from causing any problems. The M100 is an affordable USB powered hub that can be used for Matter and Aquara and third party devices. It acts as a router and a mesh extender, it supports local automations and it is adjustable so you can adjust the angle. It does also support 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi 6 with WPA3 security. To get the configuration started, I'll be putting the M100 into a USB powered plug. Here you can see that it's only drawing 1.6 watts. Now we're ready to begin the pairing process and start deployment. Thankfully that process is straightforward and you begin by downloading the official Aquara app on your platform of choice, register an account and then opening up the app so that you can start to begin discovering devices. Now it will prompt you to turn on your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and that will help you to discover the devices. You can also scan the devices later on because you can pick them up scanning things like the matter code or the QR code that is on the device and also on the instruction manual itself. So here I've turned on the devices and you can see straight away that the Hub M100 was discovered. It's as simple as just clicking the application now clicking on the item you want to adopt and then it'll go through the process of connecting to that over the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, sharing the credentials for things like the Wi-Fi adapter, getting that hooked up to your network and then adding it into your Aquara ecosystem. Once that's all done you're pretty much ready to go. I did go through the process of updating all of the firmware on these devices as two of them are quite new. It was only the hub that required an update. 
Now that the device was added successfully, you'll see that it shows up in the home page of the Aquara app, and you can then go on to customize the device even further, setting some of the things up like what firmware do you want it to use, do you want it to use Matter, or do you want it to use Zigbee, as well as a whole host of other things. You'll have to decide whether Matter is the right choice for you or whether you want to go with Zigbee. There are some features that are only available on Zigbee, and that's pretty commonplace. So decide whether you want to use Matter or Zigbee. In this version, I'm going to be using Zigbee just because I'm going to set it up with Zigbee and hopefully that will make the adoption process easier later on in the video where I use my existing Zigbee setup. You can change between them and that process I will demonstrate in a moment on the second device whereby it automatically comes with thread enabled and I want to change it over to Zigbee. The great news there was that the process was seamless and it just worked through the app. I'd seen some worrying signs of it not working previously, but for me, as I'll show on screen, it was as simple as choosing the other protocol and it just worked. So that was great to see, an awesome user experience, first time working. So bringing that to life, here you can see the application changing the firmware over to the other version. So from Thread over to Zigbee. That process is pretty quick. Obviously in this demonstration, I'm speeding it up. You can see in the top in the red box, the actual time it's taken. So once it's downloaded, it then goes over and switches that. And once that process is completed, it will then connect and go through the same process that you've just seen for adding the other devices. If everything works as planned, it should go through and then that device should be added. So here you can see that I've successfully added the climate sensor to the Aquara application. And we can set that up by adding the different readings. So here we've got the temperature and humidity. We can put that onto the dashboard so that we'll see that each time we go into the app. Now it's asking us basically to connect the thermostat because we've got the temperature and humidity available to us. And we can use those for some of those automations. So the next step is obviously then to pull out the battery tab on the thermostat itself and begin the process. What's awesome is the display is super bright. As you can see, it kind of nearly blinded me when I first saw it. Don't worry, that is toned down because you do put the plastic housing around it, which does dull it down. And you'll see that in a moment, it actually looks really slick when it's on there. And that big interface on the front makes it dead easy to find. Adding it again was exactly the same process I went through. I switched it over to Zigbee. It went through the exact same process as the climate sensor. So it sent it over, it changed it, downloaded it, applied it. And then out of the other side, we had it added to the Aquara app. And then we were able to go and configure the device. So we could add different uh, sensors to the home page, and then we could go in and do some of that configuration. You can obviously put it in rooms as well, which is really handy, you can put it in the different scenes, etc. So once that's completed, you end up back on the home page of the device, and you can see here, for example, the data for it, you can see the temperature. Next up, it's asking to do the valve calibration process. So the instructions do tell you to install this onto your radiator valve first, then go through this process. I just wanted to check it worked first. Here you can see some of the options that are available to you on this device and what it supports. I also checked the firmware to make sure I had the latest version before I went ahead, but thankfully it shipped with what is currently the latest firmware. That wasn't a problem. So the next step was to basically do the installation. So I removed the old manual valve that I have on there. Thankfully the setting, the adapter I had was the one that came shipped and that just worked out of the box which was great. Um, do have a look in the manual though to make sure that your radiator is supported or whether you need to get some additional brackets. It was as simple as just screwing it on and it pretty much worked. So I screwed it on, I then made sure that I aligned the screen to be facing forward so I could clearly read it and then I was to hop back into the application and begin the process. So back in here, I could now click calibrate. The noise of this thing is, is basically inaudible. I put my ear up against it and I could just hear it. It went through this process where it showed the F2 on the screen. That was doing all of the calibration. You could hear it obviously turning the little pin inside. And after about two minutes, that was completed. And then back in the app, I was ready to begin using it. So now it was added into the dashboard, I could start messing around with some of the automations. It automatically popped up and said, do I want to use 2.0, which I'm not familiar with 1.0, but from everything I could see on there, it looks like it's more like a if this, then that kind of setup, which is exactly what you want to see on a modern IoT device. And then I went through, basically set up some automations. So testing out the thermostat itself. So basic things like 
hey, turn this on when the temperature drops below a certain temperature. And also the inverse, just to kind of force it to work. I set something stupid like 30 degrees, went through and I validated that it was working. So literally within about two to three minutes of setting this device up on the whole ecosystem, I had the working radiator thermostat applied to my radiator and I could just begin using it, which is awesome. This is definitely different to some of the earlier IoT devices I'd used in the past. And I was really worried with obviously this being on a radiator, how was this gonna work? But as you can see, I've got the automation up and working now. I validated it was working and I was really happy with how simple that was. I didn't notice anything obvious missing from the settings in here, albeit I knew, and as I've introduced earlier in this video, my goal is to get this into Home Assistant and manage it through the Home Assistant interface. So that was the next port of call, and now we get onto that process. So now it's been about two or three days since the footage I've showed, and I've been using the application to control my network, and I've also been testing that those uh, automations that you saw consistently fired and were working. I set up a couple more to kind of turn things off and do the opposite, send me notifications of temperatures, etc. And from everything I can tell in this limited testing period, everything worked perfectly. One good thing I noticed about the thermostatic valve is that it was pretty much silent. Unless I put my ear up against it, I couldn't hear anything. So if you're concerned about this thing continuously turning on or off, if you're maybe right on the boundary of whatever temperature you set, um, I couldn't hear it. So hopefully you won't hear it either. Now, one thing I did note, but I couldn't test yet because I'm fearful of actually breaking the device, is on previous versions, I believe it was like the E1, for example, I did see a number of people complaining about the device actually breaking. And that's because apparently the motor inside was too powerful for the screws, the metal screws going to the plastic housing. And over time, I guess maybe heat next to the plastic, maybe the plastic compound itself, that did appear to fatigue. Now, I'm not sure, again, if that is in this device so it's definitely something to consider for anyone brave enough to go and actually do a disassembly perhaps I could pop the top of it but it really doesn't feel like it wants to come off so I can't validate that hopefully those issues aren't present here certainly from listening my ear against it mechanically nothing sounds like it's jarring but again only long-term use will be able to rule that problem out Anyway, now that I've tested out the app um, from that limited use, happy to recommend that. I think the Aquara app looks decent. And for people who just want the most simple out of the box experience, this looks like it will pretty much give you all of that. But anyway, as I said at the beginning of this video, I don't want to be using the Aquara app just because otherwise I'm gonna to have to monitor two ecosystems. I wanna transfer this now over to my ZLB Zigbee router and hopefully I can get all of these devices onto that network and be able to be managed through Home Assistant. Let's see how that goes. So now with all of the devices reset and the Zigbee Aquara hub pulled out of the wall so it's not powered, hopefully we're in a position now where I can start to add this to my existing setup. As a quick reminder, I'm using Zigbee to MQTT. That's then connected to my Home Assistant. I've also got the SLZB06M, which is acting as my Zigbee router. And if I wanted to, I will come onto this in future videos. I could change this to be matter over thread as well. So I will be having a look at Zigbee versus matter over thread in a subsequent video. Now, enabling devices to join on here, we'll see if anything shows up that we can now begin to adopt. Now you can see that it's picked up the climate sensor. So that's now going through and registering that on the network. It looks as though it has successfully identified it as an Aquara device. If we have a look on here, yeah, it's picked up the right thing. So, so far that's looking good. Let's now see if we can get the radiator thermostat also attached to this network. So after a little while, I did manage to get the thermostat as well. Here it is currently saying it's unsupported. I don't know if that's just because of how new this device is. So I'm gonna do a little bit of research here off camera and I'll come back with what I find. Now after checking the Zigbee to MQTT website, the device is coming up as supported. So the next thing I did was basically to pull down the latest version of that container and then double check whether or not it's supported. 
Now the good news is we've get the supported. So it was simply a case of just updating the Zigbee to MQTT app and thankfully everything is now up and running as you would expect. Jumping into Home Assistant and going into the Devices tab, we can see here now that I've got the radiator thermostat and I've got the climate sensor. If we click on those, we can see various different things that we've got on this device. So the ability to calibrate it, which is nice, um, to flip in the display if it's upside down, setting the temperatures and the different states and similarly on the climate sensor itself as well we've got different things for all of the readings so high temperatures humidities those sorts of things and i'm hopeful that we can still get the buttons to be configurable as well so if i head to one of my dashboards here i can click edit and i should be able to edit my existing sensor and add in a new device, so one of these devices. So let's just see if we can do that. So I should be able to select an entity here, and here you can see it's picked up the device that we want. Now, again, that doesn't have a very handy name. I could go back into Zigbee MQTT and just change that to be something much easier to use. I'll do that now and come straight back. A quick edit later, we should now be able to scroll down, click the Add Entity, and hopefully it's picked up the right name now for it. Scrolling down, we can see here now we've got the Aquara W100. So here I can go and grab all of the things that I want. So for this one, I probably want to go and get the temperature of this device because that's kind of what I'm measuring on this dashboard. Now probably the best way to get this thermometer up and running is to go onto something like Hacks and download, say, a thermostat control that's off Hacks itself. Here you can see the entity is the W600 and I've got some additional options here. We've also got the code edge of need. I'm just going to click save on that and we'll click done. And then here you can see behind me I've now got the thermostat here. So we should be able to click on this and be able to turn it on and off and have some additional controls. So if I click on the settings here we can say mode on. Let's put it to let's say heat. And so if I now look behind me that should be lighting up. Yep, if I click the device, that's now heating up. Testing if the other features still work, so I'm going to press the calibration. I'm going to see if that works. Yep, that's now lit up behind me. It's going through the same calibration process as previously. So everything looks as though it's working just as it was within the Aquara app, but now I've got it fully embedded into my own Home Assistant, running off my own Zigbee router. So where does that land me on this device? Well, devices actually. Um, first time I'm using Aquara, I've been very impressed. The build quality of the devices seems great. Definitely what I would expect from a more premium company and the reputation that goes with that. Using their application, everything seemed to just work. And as I showed in the video before, we could actually switch between the protocols, so between the Matter and the Zigbee Mesh, and that didn't cause any issues. I was half thinking that maybe doing that wouldn't be as seamless, it wouldn't pick up the devices, but that whole setup process was really straightforward and easy to use. And so if you're somebody coming into this ecosystem for the first time, it should be similar to things like the Hue ecosystem, etc., whereby that user experience is pretty good. Now onto the actual devices themselves and the longevity. Again, that's something I can't test. I've been using these for a couple of weeks now. Been absolutely fine, haven't had any issues, but maybe the issue of the E1 hasn't been resolved with those plastic screws, time will tell. Maybe I will, I'll try and get in touch with Aquara to see if I can get a breakdown or a schematic of that to see if that problem has been addressed and I'll pin that comment down below. Outside of that, the experience of setting it up, as I showed on the video as well, outside of the Aquara ecosystem, so using my own Home Assistant integration and my own Zigbee to MQTT, not a problem. All of the features seem to work, and I've been testing that now for a few days, and I haven't had any issues, no missed events, etc. It seems to be behaving exactly as you would expect with the Aquara app itself. So where does this land me? Well, I'm happy to recommend this product based upon the experiences I've had. Um, seems to do exactly what it says on the tin. I'd probably say for me, though, having the radiator valves, it's personally not something that I'm really that bothered about. I think the sensor itself, that's really nice. I like the big display on it. I like the buttons and the customization on those. That seems pretty good. Um, but probably the radiator valves, I'm not the right audience for that. I just 
don't need that functionality. I'm happy with just turning the heating on and off. But I think maybe in the right setup, maybe in a larger property or maybe a smaller property that you just want to have a couple of radiators in, for example, this might be the perfect way to do that. And as I said, more than happy with the device. It did exactly what it said it would do on the box and I haven't had any issues so far. So good job Aquara and hopefully if you can answer that question I've got around the build specifics and specifically the kind of the quality of the housing and the screwing around the E1 I'll drop that in the comment below. Anyway if you've liked this video please give it a thumbs up and a subscribe and if there's any other questions you want to know about this device please drop them below and I'll try my best to answer them. Anyway thanks for watching I'll see you on the next one. Take care everybody.